I love my country, but I don't love the ruling party of my country. I'm talking about the Chinese Communist Party. Look how the people are living. Don't you bloody know it in your heart? Good heavens. Anti-epidemic. Damn it. The Communist Party is really killing people. Lockdown, lockdown, lockdown. Damn you. Since the Tiananmen Square incident on June 4, 1989, a memorial service has been held in Washington, D.C. annually on June 4, with the theme of vindicating the June 4 incident. However, since 2005, the memorial theme has changed to call in upon members of the Chinese Communist Party, or CCP, to quit the party. As we enter the year 2022, the global movement to quit the CCP and its affiliated organizations has become widespread in China and among overseas Chinese communities. Organizers of the campaign claim that 400 million Chinese have withdrawn from the CCP and its related organizations by late August 2022. On August 3rd, the number of Chinese people who have renounced the CCP have reached 400 million. That is a remarkable step in our 18 years' efforts of helping Chinese people realize the evil nature of the CCP and persuade them to quit the CCP. It's a milestone that will bring positive changes to China and will bring peaceful transitions to Chinese society. A free China is in the making. The CCP is known for its tight control of public opinion and minds, so how could this have happened? In November 2004, the Epoch Times, a relatively small Chinese language newspaper in Washington, D.C., published nine articles critiquing the CCP. The articles were disseminated to China through the internet and other channels and spurred a campaign to quit the party. A month later, Epic Times Media set up a portal on its website and began accepting submissions from the public to quit the party, League, and Pioneer. The party refers to the Chinese Communist Party, the League refers to the Communist Youth League, and the Pioneer refers to the Communist Young Pioneers in China. The term, quit the party, literally means withdraw from the CCP. What it entails is that an individual can use his or her real name or an alias to renounce the CCP-imposed ideology and retract his or her oath. When Chinese people join the CCP and its affiliated organizations, they have to swear by their lives that they would dedicate their lives to the CCP. And in practice, the CCP doesn't allow people to opt out, meaning that it's an organization that one can only join but not quit. In January 2005, the Epoch Times published a statement calling on Chinese people to withdraw from the CCP-related organizations to protect themselves. In the same year, the Global Quit the Party Service Center was registered and established. The Quit the Party movement soon gained the support of many overseas democracy activists. Their view is that in this age of advanced information and rapid military mobilization, it is virtually impossible for a revolution of force to succeed. The Quit the Party movement is a peaceful form of non-cooperation with the CCP, just like Gandhi's non-cooperation movement in India. Whether openly or secretly withdrawing from the party, it indicates that one has made a clear break in one's heart and will no longer help and support the CCP. As a result, the CCP will gradually be disintegrated, eventually changing the social conditions and the nature of the regime in China. This movement is what we need most. It's realistic and practical. It can work. I am very grateful to President Yi Rong for inviting me. There are many friends here I should thank. Today, I thank you all. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you. The rapid growth of the Epic Times Media Group has helped the Quit the Party movement expand its influence globally at a fast pace. Now the media outlet is not limited to the Chinese language. In 2020, the New York Times ran a story with some negative references to the Epic Times. 
Still, it acknowledged that in 2016 and 2017, the media group morphed into one of the most influential electronic publishers in the U.S. The New York Times even used the term media empire to describe its once obscure counterpart. In November 2018, the Hoover Institution at Stanford University in California, a leading U.S. think tank, published a 213-page report of great weight. The report focused on exposing the CCP's comprehensive infiltration and manipulation of the U.S. government, universities, media think tanks, businesses, and overseas Chinese communities. 32 distinguished scholars on Chinese issues jointly published it. Most of them are prominent scholars with a deep affection for China, who had hoped for liberalizing reforms from the Beijing government but found their hopes shattered. The report stated, Given these efforts by Beijing, the space for truly independent Chinese language media in the U.S. has shrunk to a few media outlets supported by the adherents of Falun Gong, the banned religious sect in China, and a small publication and website called Vision Times. The report named a long list of U.S. Chinese language media outlets that are clearly aligned with Beijing state media and recommended that any foreign-owned or foreign-controlled media, including print media, and particularly those that advance a foreign government line, should be required to register under the Foreign Agents Registration Act, FARA. One such media outlet listed is Tsingtao Daily. It was founded in 1978 with a head office in Hong Kong. It used to be a number one Chinese media outlet in Canada in terms of size. On August 23, 2021, the U.S. Department of Justice confirmed that Tsingtao Daily was registered as a foreign agent. One year later, on August 28, 2022, the Tsingtao Media Group seized its print publication in Canada. This seems to represent the end of an era. Having experienced the Sino-U.S. trade war, the real estate crisis, and the pandemic, China has had its economic strength greatly weakened and can no longer afford large sums of money to support major outreach projects. The Western world, led by the U.S., has also ended its illusions about Beijing and begun a confrontational relationship with the CCP. The Hoover Report also noted in the appendix that the Epoch Times, The Hope Radio, and New Tong Dynasty TV remain independent of PRC control. They are either owned or operated by adherents to the Falun Gong sect. The Quit the Party movement has received enthusiastic responses from Falun Gong practitioners, many of whom have become its volunteers. Some of these volunteers have been making phone calls to China for over a decade, spreading the word about the movement and urging Chinese people to quit the party. New York City, the center of the world. Tourists from all over the world come and go every day of the year to Times Square. Here, 73-year-old Ms. Gao arrives at the same time every day to warmly greet strangers from China. New York's Pier 15 is where people go to visit the Statue of Liberty, and Ms. Chu can always be found among the crowd. The beautiful city of Lucerne, Switzerland, is a cultural center that attracts tourists from far and wide. Ms. Yang, a retired university executive now in her 70s, has been traveling three hours a day for the past 12 years to find the Chinese tourists there. Scenes like this are many and can be found in Los Angeles, Washington, D.C., Paris, Hong Kong, Taiwan, and over 100 other cities and regions around the globe. It's terrible the way that they're doing it, and the, and the communist uh, Chinese, they're, they got everybody locked down still, apparently. I know. Yeah. It's, it's terrible. Many uh, 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 Chinese people have been brutally persecuted by the CCP, including my family, my friends, and myself. Many more fellow Chinese, whom I don't know, have been persecuted as well. And many human rights lawyers who have spoken out for these innocent people have been persecuted. I'm very lucky to be in a free environment. We want to tell the world, not only the Chinese, but also the Westerners, 
in a peaceful manner so that they can know the evil nature of the CCP and learn about the truth. In the 18 years since the rise of the Quit the Party movement, there has been no official response from the Chinese government. Perhaps Beijing believes that a response would mean recognizing the threat posed by the Quit the Party movement. Terms like Quit the Party and Nine Commentaries are heavily censored and filtered out of China's internet. On the eve of November 2009, a corner photo on the front page of the Jinzhou Evening News, a Chinese media outlet, displayed text encouraging the three withdrawals, saying, Heaven will destroy the CCP, San Tui, to stay safe. The newspaper was immediately shut down, and all newspapers that had been printed and distributed were recalled and scrapped. San Tui means withdrawal from the Communist Party, the Communist Youth League, and the Young Pioneers of China. This cannot be blamed on the carelessness of the CCP's party media staff, as there are many such stickers in China. Many Falun Gong practitioners in mainland China are engaged in a guerrilla war against the CCP, sending all kinds of pamphlets, stickers, and banners to all corners of China. Of course, there is a great risk of going to prison or even losing one's life. However, these adherents have never given in to the Chinese Communist Party and have become stronger opponents than ever before. According to the Falun Gong website Mingwei.org, many Falun Gong practitioners in China are spreading the message of the Quit the Party movement in the streets and alleys, calling it part of their truth clarification efforts. We believe that the emergence and development of Falun Gong is a major event in China after the establishment of the CCP regime. The fierce political struggles within the CCP to this day are linked to Falun Gong in one way or another. Here, we will briefly introduce this spiritual group. Falun Dafa, also known as Falun Gong, is an advanced self-cultivation practice that improves mental and physical wellness through physical exercises and the development of one's character. Another part of Falun Gong practitioners' truth clarification efforts is to spread information about Falun Gong. They also refer to it as Dafa, the Great Law in English. In 1999, former Communist Party leader Jiang Zemin and his partner Chen Qinghong initiated the persecution of the Falun Gong group. It is said that more than 100 million Chinese practiced Falun Gong at the time, which made Jiang Zemin jealous and fearful, believing that Falun Gong was competing with the Communist Party for the masses. Falun Gong is a type of Qigong that has a long history in China. The modern Qigong movement in China emerged in the early 1950s. Senior Communist Party officials, including some of the CCP patriarchs at the time, began learning it to improve their health. To avoid being considered feudal superstition, the modern Qigong has steered away from the connotations of traditional culture, thus surviving the Mao Zedong era. In the 1980s, when China entered the period of reform and opening up, the government's ideological control over the people was relatively loose. At that time, there was a climax of Qigong and supernatural fever in society. Falun Gong incorporates spiritual connotations into the external form of Qigong and practitioners must follow the truthfulness, compassion, forbearance principles. In December 1993, the founder of Falun Gong, Li Hongji, led his followers to participate in the Oriental Health Expo organized by the government and won the highest award of the Boundary Science Progress Award and the Special Gold Award of the Expo. Falun Gong soon became a leading force in the field. In the early days of Jiang Zemin's persecution, the Chinese people responded coldly. But the self-immolation in Tiananmen Square in January 2001, which all Chinese media reported in full force, terrified the public. Falun Gong believes that the CCP has staged the entire incident to create a negative impression of Falun Gong and justify the suppression of Falun Gong. In 2001, at the United Nations, the International Organization for Educational Development declared to the world that the Tiananmen self-immolation was a deliberate pseudo-case directed by the CCP. 
Amnesty International reported that after July 1999, the Beijing government imposed forced labor reform, ideological reform, re-education, and threats illegally on Falun Gong practitioners, including detention, forced labor, and torture. The U.S. House of Representatives Resolution 605 in 2010, calling for an end to the repression, stated that the government of the People's Republic of China has spent the past decade slandering Falun Gong with enormous resources around the world. A 2004 resolution of the National Court of the Republic of China or Taiwan government stated that the practice of Falun Gong by hundreds of millions of people in dozens of countries promotes the improvement of social morality and the physical and mental health of the vast number of practitioners and believes that the CCP launched a national propaganda machine to smear and slander it in an all-around way. Many people seem unable to understand how Falun Gong practitioners can have the courage to fight against the Red Regime in China. Perhaps we can find some references in traditional Chinese culture and values. Confucius, the founder of Confucianism, said, If I hear the truth or Tao in the morning, then I can die in the evening without regret. The history of China has left many examples of people who gave up their lives for the sake of benevolence and righteousness, fighting tyranny by sacrificing themselves. The motto of the Quit the Party movement began to expand extensively. During the anti-extradition movement in 2019, Hong Kong people organized several massive rallies. In those rallies, the slogan of the Quit the Party movement was heard, Heaven will disintegrate the CCP. Many people also held posters that featured the slogan. Another very popular poster seen in the rallies read, Hong Kong, hang on. According to the Wall Street Journal, these posters were created by a prominent Chinese comic book artist, Guo Jing Shang, whose pen name is Da Xiong. He is a practitioner of Falun Gong, for which he served time in prison in China. Guo is known as the anime king in China. He was the youngest university professor under the age of 30 to have published the most books in China. He came to the U.S. in 2007. On August 24th of this year, his animation documentary, Eternal Spring, was selected for the Oscar for Best International Film. Well, What, uh, for you, is the main message of the movie? The main message is, uh, is the word, the truth. 
the truth can save the people, can give the people the choice. The film has also become the first Canadian animated documentary in Chinese to be nominated for an Oscar. When the news broke, educational institutions in some provinces in China immediately issued notices for schools and parents to conduct a book audit, banning all of Guo's works that have been legally published. Perhaps, to make this move less obvious, another very well-known Chinese author and a Taiwanese author were also included in the list. These moves by the CCP make people wonder who is the strong one and who is weak. Perhaps, when people no longer fear, they find themselves exceptionally strong. An evil regime is far worse than a virus. You must understand it. Damn it. Damn you. In July 2020, several media outlets, including the Wall Street Journal, reported that President Trump was considering a total ban on the entry of CCP members and their families, and was also considering deporting party members. At that time, Google searches in Chinese for the term quit the party spiked, suggesting that this may reflect the mindset of the general public. Searches for how to quit the party jumped 150%, and process of quitting the party spiked 120%. In October 2020, the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services published a policy guideline that unless exempted any prospective immigrant with membership in the Communist Party or other totalitarian political parties, their affiliates or related institutions, whether in the U.S. or abroad, will be denied. According to the Quit the Party Center, there had been a noticeable surge in the number of Chinese students coming to quit the party since the news broke. The CCP is turning an increasing number of Chinese into its opponents and enemies. In this prolonged battle against a severe epidemic, the Chinese people have backed down to a point where there is no more room to retreat. At the same time, a very large number of the volunteers for quitting the party movement said that they would continue this campaign until the day the CCP disintegrates. It's foreseeable that the quit the party movement will only expand at a faster pace in China and around the globe. The CCP's actions have caused a worldwide backlash, including India, the Philippines, Hong Kong, Taiwan, Japan, and Korea. Especially this year, the proportion of signatures by the Koreans is higher than before. South Korea and China used to trade more closely. But through the serious events in Hong Kong, the Koreans have seen how evil the CCP is. It suppresses and persecutes students in Hong Kong, and Koreans are disgusted by it. Sometimes I wonder if I should go out today. Should we go elsewhere for leisure? But the people are inspiring us to keep doing what we do, so it's no problem to continue. <laughs> we must resist the CCP until the day it collapses. Yes, I will persist until the end, as long as the CCP is not destroyed. I will not stop this campaign until the day it ends. I want to persist until the end of CCP. Do you think that day will come? Yes, I think it will. Why? Because there is retribution for good and evil. The CCP has killed so many people and done so many bad things. I don't think the divine will let it go on doing so much evil. I'm sure you will be stopped.